6 o'clock. Uh, the session. Is there any... Is this the agenda right here? Right there? There's no other agenda. It's okay. just to go so through this sure. list and any other things that... There's no other agenda. Okay. 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 So all this really is, is to me, is right. a question and answer period. Nope. So let's, um, let's get started. Yeah. And so, you know, some feedback from Carolyn and Chuck yep. about what's on her plate, what's on his plate, what could be on his plate or not. And, you know, the I kind of proposed some owners here, and it really was a temporary, you know, not a long-term proposal. It's really until we, you know, fill our vacancies. Um, so when, when you look at the owners I'm proposing, it's really a temporary measure. Um, that's all I have to say about that. And then, um, so, so the first, um, obviously this, you know, we're on this. I had a conversation with MRI today. Um, and I got some feedback from them, um, and I expect that on that Monday's meeting, I'll you know kind of um, kind of have flushed that out and share that information about what they have for offerings. So I don't mind. Um, and I saw that he sent a couple of emails, which yeah. is good. So Paul can start reviewing that too. Yeah. Yep. I also got information from. So I think we can leave that with the select board. Um, I, I think there's no issue. I don't have any real questions around that. So my, my real reason for putting it on the list is to make sure that um, in the notes there that you um, recognize that there should be an onboarding process for the new select board person. What are the rules and tr available trainings and, and how does this, how does your role function? Mm -hmm. um, and then also to remind you all to vote for a new chair and all the ex officio positions. So okay. that, that's more for you to keep track of making sure those things happen. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, so the ambulance contract. So that's signed, as I understand it, and so we've already passed that, that should be okay, and so I will make sure that that's um, received by them and otherwise in order. And then um, the next step would be a disbursement form um, for them for the $36,000 that we owe them for this year. So okay. um, once I see that... Um, the contract is fully signed and um, right, received by all, then, then I'll work on getting that in your board folder for an upcoming meeting. There's no time frame on that disbursement. They just tend to like it around, um, typically around June or July, so it's delayed already for them. Okay. Um, so I, I made a note that we needed a point of contact. I think Mark has been the point of contact so far. I don't know if you had, have any involvement in that, Chuck. Like With what? The ambulance contract. Are you in the Other than now? writing the check for, for it, no. Okay. All right. Um, so I think Mark is fine at this point in the process, yeah. but he's not the one to typically remember that the contract expired right. or to pay attention to whether or not they get paid or anything yep. like that. And so when does that, what's the um, time frame on the contract? So it expires in December of 22. Okay, so we have until next December. Yes, but if you're going to have any conversation around choices and options, you yep. should be thinking about that probably in April of, you know, this coming year. Just to give time for my classes. exploring that. So I think, um, so really it's um, just a matter of check, writing a check, hopefully. Yeah. Right. That I can do. Mm -hmm. The town hall portico, at the time I made this list, um, there was, was not the concern for structural um, integrity that we're talking about now. So that's why it says approved payment when complete. Um, Somebody will get an invoice for that, and um, somebody needs to make sure that everything's done and that you're satisfied with it to recommend to Chuck to pay the bill. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe um, we have Tom Clark as the inspector. That's good. Okay. Um, but it's really about the scope of what you paid him to do, and so he agreed to fill in some cracks and some things like that. Um, I, I think he already did that. Like, I noticed that he started. I did check it out yesterday. Yeah, I think he's made good progress on that. Um, I will check in with Jay Stevens about when we can expect a quote. I don't know 
when that when, when to expect that. But Jay Stevens is our contact with. Hey, sorry. Um, these are the Norton notices. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Jay Stevens is contact what? Um, he's our contact for civil consultants. He's the town engineer. He's not the one who is looking at the portico because he's not a structural engineer. He's more of a, a civil, environmental, something other kind of engineer. But he's having somebody from his firm come look at the portico. Okay. Um, so he uh, will. So I guess one of the actually the most important questions is any correspondence that might be going to before will now go to the select board. Let, let's, that's a really important point, let's talk about that in a minute. Um, but Jay Stevens is um, very familiar and affiliated with Tom Clark. So Tom is also familiar with the portico conversation. So if that quote comes after I'm no longer here and Jay knows when I'm leaving, then um, Tom is likely to get that quote and he knows to forward it okay. to the board. Um, as, as far as... Um, email and, and all that goes. Um, I am going to work with Chuck to change my voicemail to, you know, because that's as important as email, um, that when people are calling the town hall looking for something that they are appropriately redirected, but I would um, certainly welcome select board input about what that says, and I, I haven't really worked with Chuck on that yet because there's not yet a somebody else or a plan or somebody sitting there to, and, and what is that person's scope of responsibility. So we can certainly defer more calls to Tom and some calls to some other people, but, um, but it would be helpful to, to have a better idea of how you'd like us to redirect people. Yep. Okay. Um, as far as, um, so, most of us at the town hall have e um, alias email addresses, um, which we use for outside agencies so that there's always continuity and they reach the right person. So even when there's change in staff, people know the email address to use to reach people. So people can reach me at admin at Rollinsford. Um, can you, um, so can you my, move forward? So, so my thought about that was to change the admin email address to be a, a group email address that goes to Chuck and the board, I guess, so that you're all seeing those emails, but that also Chuck would be checking my regular email account for the people that don't email admin, and then he can forward emails to other people who can do something with them, or else if he doesn't know what to do with it, I would suggest he's probably going to send it to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as Chuck's okay with that, I'm okay. Yeah. So, so that's my proposal about, and then and then at the same time, I would put a a vacation autoresponder on my email address um, to let people know that the email address is being monitored, but that I'm no longer there, and that they should um, find somebody else to contact, and if they're still really lost, they can reach out to the select board group email address. Okay. Um, Chuck and Tia are both Google administrators. Um, Tia has more experience with that, but it's more convenient that Chuck is more immediately available. So when we have a select board member, hopefully that'll happen before I go, and then I can make sure that person um, gets an email address and is wrapped into the select board group email. Um, and then I'll keep admin as part of the select board group email so that when a new person comes on board, they will get the admin. Um, Chuck will know how to take admin out of the group function and back to a singular alias that will point to the new person's new email address when that's created, if that makes sense. Um, yes. So that was my thought about how to handle uh, so, Chuck, how comfortable are you um, with being the admin? Oh, um, I don't know. I'll figure it out when I get there. Oh, so you but, don't have any experience? Uh, well, I can do, you know, no. Okay. Will I ever okay. administer a Google account? No. Okay. But, but it is fairly intuitive, it and he's, you know, and he's bright. So we'll go through it before I go. Okay. And he can also, you know, T is also a resource, and Sean and can help him if he gets stuck. So okay. there's going to be a lot of figuring out. So well, I'll figure it out. But 
I don't, so, and this is why I want to have this conversation, because maybe it makes sense to include me in that process, because I am pretty comfortable with Google and computers, and um, if, if that helps Chuck. Because we, again, we want to be selective about what we drop on Chuck's plate. I think that's a good idea. I mean, as long as, if it I also can. gives us an out, not that you can be doing the job, but you can also yeah. get that yeah. extra stuff. Okay. Certainly, if I can consult you when I have a question, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, certainly. Um, but I think as part of the process of transitioning to Chuck, I think maybe um, if I can be included in a meeting for that. Well, how much training do you think he's going to need? Yes, um, I really think this is like 10 or 15 minutes tops. Okay. It's really just about the admin console in Google mm -hmm. and how when you go into the you know that admin console, you get a dashboard and you can see users and you can see groups and it's really very intuitive. You click on the stormwater committee, you can see who the owners are and you can delete people and you can add people. Okay. It's really very straightforward. Okay. So mm -hmm. you know, if you need help, check. Then I'll be there. Very good. But is it like an owners type permission thing where we should have more than one person? More than so, one? so we do have Tia and Chuck. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so I think we're covered there. I, I don't have a problem with potentially adding another person, but I think there ought to be consistency mm. in, in who does things so that they're done and, you know, um, just so that every, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen and things get kind of messed up and, and people think they know what they're doing and they have good intentions but they don't follow up or there becomes confusion around, I thought you were going to do it and you thought I was going to do it. What's our agreement with Tia? Like, how, because I, I'm not really sure how she fits into the picture as an admin. Um, she <laughs> became an admin as a function of her role on the um, subcommittee that um, led to the select board decision for us to not ever have had servers. We never had servers. We had individual computers. That was an outdated idea. And then in trying to solve that problem, we skipped the idea of servers and went to Google. And she was part of that subcommittee with Suzanne and Tom Bell and um, some other people. And is, is it paid? Um, she is not paid. So Google is a paid idea, but right. but Tia is not really paid for anything. So so it's just a function of having been part of starting that. So she helps us with a lot of you know administrative functions as needed, such as when there's some kind of um, you know s strange alert that that is kind of technical that we don't really understand. Um, as a function of a time saver, you know yeah I could Google that error message and see what it means, but it's very helpful to be able to just ask her to let us know what that means and fix it and, and interact with Google on our behalf if we're having a problem or something like that. Okay. Kind of so. comfortable, you might want to get possibly more involved with that since, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you have an understanding. Yep. I don't want to yeah. share either, but I'll yeah. be first to say I'm not computer literate. I'm okay, but... Well, I'm, I'm just concerned that she's a volunteer, you know, right. basically. And, then, and that at any day she could say, I'm done. Um, yeah. So having then, more than one person would be more important. But well, I, I agree, but if you're going to have, and, and, and that's a very respectable position to have, but in the same way, um, select board people are volunteers, and sometimes they resign, and often mm -hmm. they don't run for more than one term. Right. So it's, you know, it's not really any different, and yet we don't, so, so my suggestion would be that, you know, the next permanent TA be that second person, and then you have those two people with, and they're employees, and in theory, that provides more long-term stability. Right, I would agree with that, but in the interim, we might want to... In the interim, yeah. yeah. I would just say, in the grand scheme of things to figure, that's not a big one to figure. No. So, I would move yeah. on to the other stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be bigger stuff, because Google, I can figure out by Googling. Okay, so. and we can always, we can, we can always really? change it later. Right. Okay. Yes, right. yes. I would encourage you to keep this conversation going as things are working and not working and needing, um, and more things pop up and, and what have you. I'm a good figurer, just so you know. Okay, great. I have lots of experience running things in the world. Perfect. All right. I just don't want to put too much in your no. plate, Chuck. No, it's all good. Okay, But great. just, you don't know that I'm a director of a nonprofit. I do boards all the time. I've dealt with boards for years in other managerial jobs, so just so you know. Yeah.
ready to work and do stuff. Okay, cool. You're confident. More than confident, yes. <coughs> okay, all right, good, thank you. Um, so I just added it to the list and as you as you and Tia as owners. So we, okay, and then I think might want add in, so more admins later. So, so okay. town hall plumbing, I think you can delete the fact we're waiting for the quote and just needing to make sure that, um, so they're aware that the purchase order got, um, got approved. I'm just going to put pending payment on that. Um, so, yeah, but, but just as a note, um, one of the functions of say for example like the road agent when a road is getting paved or cracked sealed that person looks over a vendor's work and, and kind of makes yeah. sure it gets done and did a, so, so there's nobody who's going to look over and make sure did all the toilets really get their parts replaced and are they all functioning properly mm -hmm. okay so i made a note that it needs evaluation of completed work um i'm gonna i'm gonna add um, well check for payment but I'll, I'll put tom as well just as a potential owner of that Okay, got it. So just so you know, we have not used Tom for our building needs in any capacity. Yeah. So I would encourage you to communicate with him about, just like you Tim are now needs. with, with yeah. Chuck, and, and find out what is his additional availability, sure. willingness, scope. Well, hopefully this is like a one-time thing that maybe takes an hour. You know? Yeah. I mean, no long-term ownership of plumbing. Um, I, I wouldn't say that or any... You know, I mean, if we if we want to engage him more long term for maintenance of the building, then I think we need to talk about his job description and salary. And I don't think he's interested in that. I, I'm quite sure he's not interested in that. And I think this falls very much in his bailiwick that he's the building inspector anyway. I just wanted to, you know, it's typically not something he would. Sure. He would otherwise do. Okay. Okay. So, um, what's not currently cool? So that's the fire alarm system. So now this is waiting for parts. Oh, I must have not been scolded. I'm not scolded. Oh, okay, got it. Yep. Show us at the window what you think today about it. That's what I'm for. I'm sorry, what's that? I think Sean's had an email about this today. The fire alarm. Pardon me, I'll see. Okay. So this is. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything from Sean today. He did send one late yesterday. Um, that was about the fire station. So I just made a note that we won't probably see anything until October. Yeah. Okay. Um, the generator. John is working on getting quotes. He has some quotes, not enough to meet what you know the board is looking for. Um, he's really been struggling with this, um, just because. When he's here during the day, the call volume has been, mm -hmm. you know, very busy. So it, he's not neglecting it, but this this ball has been in, in the chief's court. Okay. Um, the funding absolutely expires at the end of the year. And you can the, work with John on that. Um, you can work. So so the only thing, I'll, the, one more thought about the funding is that okay. if you can sign a contract with a vendor, mm -hmm. well, like even three or four weeks before the end of the year, then you can secure the funding. But if you've got no promise of something real happening and December 31st comes and goes, then you have to go back to the town and ask for money again or find it in the operating budget. Okay. All right. I can, I can go. Okay. I put myself um, as like a point of contact um, on that call. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, all it takes on these, though. You can't take yep. that. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so Kim, are you going to manage the budget spreadsheet and make sure it's all up to date with mm -hmm. board decisions? Is that I think Paul would want me to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm okay. I, mean, I'm, I'm I see okay Paul jumping up and down with that. <laughs> sure. Um, no, I'm not jumping up and down. Just, okay just make sure, yeah, just note that that's um, the rebudgeting. Um, so, 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 I'm sorry, let's put rebudgeting aside. So the budget, the 2022 budget planning worksheet, but also the revo the, the estimated revenue, the 2022. Right? Right. Um, and then the rebudgeting worksheet is something that I would do and recommend to the board. Um, the board never reviewed it and approved it. It was just sort of guidance of how you might, you know, know what money is, is available and flexible. Um, the current year budget you know, so 2021 gets monthly updated expenses. Chuck updates that worksheet. 2022 um, proposed budget 
as you keep moving along, if you send Chuck the current version, he can update that to have current year-to-date expenses every month. Okay, so so Chuck, you're managing the the update the well the updates for expenses. Yep. How yes. often do you do that? Uh, I try to do it at the end of every month. So. Okay. But um, but but you have the one copy of the spreadsheet. So he can't just yep. send it to you. You have to send him, this is our current version, and he'll send it back to you, and then you make sure that that becomes the new current version, if that makes sense, so that they're not confused. Right, right. Okay, so we, we should kind of coordinate the management of that. Yeah, okay. so that can get tricky. Okay. The rebudgeting worksheet, I don't know if you find value in that, but what I, what I do with that is um, I, I take money where it's done for the year, we're not going to spend any money, more money there, or, um, or if a department head says, I'm going to zero out my equipment line so that I can spend more money on this other line, then I, then I actually do that within their budget. Mm -hmm. Or if it's like utilities or some other thing that we're going to end up having to spend, I, I put more budget dollars on that. And then at the very bottom of that spreadsheet, you can see the available budget dollars. So as it stands now, According to that spreadsheet, your contingency is whole at like $22,000. $22, All of your budget needs are fully funded. Um, and and so, so th there are not any critical known needs. And then um, you have about $120,000 of budget money that doesn't really have a purpose. It's not going to be needed where it was originally allocated. Okay. So, so just so you know, you, you have that flexibility as you consider um, replacing me an MRI and whatever other unbudgeted expenses um, happen. You, you have flexibility, but also I, I don't know who or how you will be able to keep the, you know, that rebudgeting worksheet up to date. I don't know if you find value in it and want to continue to update it, but it's the same thing where if you're going to own that worksheet and kind of do your own figuring of how we can move money around, then you're going to need to get it to Chuck every month and, and manage, which is the official version. Okay, so I think we should just probably plan to get together to go through it. Uh, uh, what's your level of comfort with that, Chuck, with that, those worksheets? Oh, I love Excel. Okay, good. Yeah. See that, Paul? You're off the hook. You guys both love Excel. Excel. I love Excel. Excel is an art form. It's like paint. You yeah. know, you can make magical things happen. That's right. Um, just, can I just step back, just to um, kind of Paul's point. Paul, would you mind being kind of like the point of contact um, on the Portico project? Mm -hmm. And you could, um, you could work with um, um, Tom on it, maybe? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'm trying to divvy up the, um, yes, the phone. Down the phone. Down the phone. Down the phone. Down the Oops, that's plumbing. How about plumbing, too? The plumbing in the portico? That's all Tom. So I'll also, it's just... coming down farther, but I'll also take ownership of the stormwater permit, which is coming up in like 10 days. Excellent. Um, and so I'm just putting you on, Paul, as um, a portico plumbing, just to kind of inter maybe interface with Tom. Portico and plumbing. Mind. Perfect. Right. No, no, that's perfect. Okay. Just, you know. Yep. As a reviewer. Yep. I've only met Tom a couple times, but I'll talk to Tom and I'll also talk to the civil engineer. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Um, fire alarm system. I think, you know, we can probably, we'll hear from that, from fire about that together. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's still okay. working. And then, okay, so we're budgeting, so me and Chuck, me and Chuck, um, weren't drafting, right? So, for zoning women. Well, well, the whole warrant. So mm -hmm. somebody needs to manage the whole warrant. It's kind of like the um, the budget spreadsheet in that um, there ought to be one master one who you know somebody who manages it and takes the edits on behalf of the board and makes sure that there's the one official version. Okay. But I, I say there to include zoning amendments because it's important to be communicating with the planning board about whatever they're going to propose for the um, for zoning ordinance uh, revisions to make sure they get on the warrant. Mm -hmm. And I would even add um, petition warrant articles and make sure somebody's looking out for um, petition warrant articles and did the town court get any and um, do, we, do, do they have 25 veritable signatures and all that. Um, so do we know for, for sure there's a, a zoning coming up? 
Uh, they are going to have, a, you know, two to four revisions, I would say. Yes. They have to have public hearings in, you know, December and January. So they haven't finalized what specifically they're starting to talk about what, but it's not finalized yet. Any well, well, I'm sorry, what role does the town clerk on that? Um, only for the 25 signatures and more. And it, and so, more so a petition warrant article is turned into the town clerk, and the town clerk verifies that the signatures are of 25 individual res registered voters. And then once the town clerk certifies that, then um, typically he'll send a scanned copy along to me or, or to the whole board. I would then send it along to the board, and then I'll take that language and put it on the warrant. So, Chuck, do you have any experience doing warrants? Nope, other than uh, monitoring their, uh, what, what money has been used for. So, so a couple of notes about the warrant. Um, to some extent, you can take the previous year's warrant and use the same language. For mm -hmm. example, with the operating budget, and you just plug in a new number. Um, the other thing about the warrant is that everything about um, town meeting and money, including the warrant, has to be inputted into the um, municipal tax rate setting portal in advance. So, so Chuck is going to be closing out year-end financials in December and then moving quickly into audit at the same time that um, the warrant is getting revised and finalized by the board. Um, the, um, the public hearing for the budget is in the middle of January and by that time, the warrant needs to be pretty final. You, you can tweak it after that, but any money needs to be presented at that public hearing as it would be written. But the trick about it is that he has to have it all already entered into the DRA portal, like completely set and have DRA review it. So, so we've got a lot of things happening in short order all at the same time at a very bad calendar time of the year, like, like too much happening at once. And then I would always, just for the public record, always advise the board to get um, a legal opinion on the warrant prior to all of that, which further exacerbates the time frame of everything. Um, the board doesn't typically um, get legal counsel, but um, it's, it's always a good idea, particularly if there's anything new that wasn't on there from the previous year, just to be sure that whether it passes or fails, that it's, well, really more importantly, if it passes, is it legal and enforceable? Okay. <clears throat> um, so you said it needs to be in the DRA portal in advance of the public hearing? Um, not just in advance, but enough in advance that he can um, alert DRA to be to have to review it, and so so they have to have enough time to review it that they can provide feedback back to the town, so that you can implement that feedback um, or disregard it or whatever prior to that. Do we have a number like two weeks or um, two weeks is a good idea, but but this is not. Um, you got to be flexible about it, while at the same time it's not realistic because um, you never really know what your DRA advisor's availability is at these really congested times of year. Okay. So, and, and also, by the way, the select board needs to know what it's presenting because Chuck might have lots of availability to put into portal, but if the board hasn't decided, you know, is the board really done or is it going to still decide to add that one more item mm -hmm. or whatever like that? Okay. All right. Well, I think probably by the time we get to that, we'll have um, some experience. Um, not necessarily our experience, but some of the experience. I hope so. Be good. Yeah. All right. Good. Um, so, Stormwater Paul, you said that you um, will be the point of contact for yeah. that. Okay. So, oops. Um, so, so that's due September 28th. The, the Stormwater Committee is meeting next week, but by the way... Um, Tuesday, right? Well, Joe can't make... Um, no, Stormwater's meeting Tuesday, but CIP cannot meet on Thursday. So my thought is to see if CIP can switch with Stormwater and do CIP on, um, on Tuesday, and then... And then 
stormwater on Thursday, but that complicates your role on CIP if because you're doing select board interviews at 5:30 on Tuesday. What's so, CIP? Um, six. So um, well, it, it could still happen. I mean, so I say even if you right? join late, I guess that's probably still the better thing to make sure all those things happen. And if you're ten minutes late, you're ten minutes late. It's all going to happen right here in the building, so. Well, and possibly in two different rooms yeah. because we can't be here at the same time. I think you have somebody in the waiting room. I just let them in. Okay. I actually heard it this time. Good. Um, okay. So Paul, um, I, and I know that there's kind of an open discussion about somebody to kind of own the permitting process. Um, I think you know, it's on the radar. Mm -hmm. I would say. It ought to be. Just put my name off and I'll uh, be, I mean, it's going to be soon that we, okay. so to speak, submit it, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, good. And then, okay. That, um, that, that's a general note. It's yeah. about cybersecurity and sexual harassment, but it's really just an example of a much bigger problem to bring awareness to. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to John about it today. Because of their CJS certification downstairs, the police department is, is compliant, at least with um, cybersecurity and sexual harassment. But there's no, I, I guess I'm just bringing to your attention that there's no enforcement procedure, there's no... Um, awareness or like like what is the training um pro like how frequently are we doing what because i wouldn't say that any of this should be a one and done but maybe an annual thing to remind people about you know what qualifies as sexual harassment and how you know how to make sure not to be taken advantage of by email just as examples but primates has quite a lot of free online training so this, this isn't really a cost issue, it's um, an administrative and, um, it's an administrative issue, but it's also an organizational structure issue where, um, you know, how do you, how do you enforce this with, with some employees? But so we have sexual harassment policy in our personal manual now, just not cybersecurity, right? Um, correct, however, I wouldn't want to suggest that sexual harassment is up to date mm -hmm. and, and meets modern standards. It, it's mentioned, but I, I wouldn't suggest that it's sufficient. And frankly, the whole personnel policy, I would recommend be, and, and maybe this would be work for a subcommittee, but break it down into um, an employment manual that has different sections in it. So you can take out sexual harassment, update it, send it to the employees, they sign off on the revision, it goes in the back in the employment manual. So when you get a new hire, they get the whole manual. But as you revise it, you can update just the sections that you need to update without rewriting the whole thing and then people have to wonder where the revision is. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's something that is you know kind of on the Yeah that, that's just down the road. I'm just yeah. trying to pass on information as I think of it. But Oh that's good, thank you. Um, okay so this, I think, you know, was on our plate, it's on, um, on the um, strategic worksheet, um, uh -huh. and I think, you know, that's a research project for us. Okay, so this is critical. That's right. Um, so, in my conversation with Alan today, he did say that, you know, if <coughs> we wanted to do um, temporary services, this is something they could advise us on. So, um, but I definitely want to hear um, what you have to offer about this as well. Tax rate setting? Yeah. About the timing, et cetera. Um, um, I, I would like for Chuck to speak to this too, but I, you know, my, my, I have two concerns about this. Um, available time, and um, so, so, so Chuck is, is busy in his existing 31 hours, so he can take on more potentially, but at the expense of something. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe the something is just the delay of something getting done rather than it not getting done. It depends on how much we're giving for him to do. I think it's perfectly reasonable to ask for Chuck to do the tax rate setting process and to learn that function. And I think he would be good at it and enjoy it. But it is an investment of time in learning it. Um, at the same time that he's got a lot of other things going on at the same time with closing up the year end books and audit that may not make that reasonable from you know a time perspective since all of that is 
time sensitive in nature and happening all at the same time. But if, you know, I, I would. So, how much do you know about it now? Um, I've entered some of the stuff into the DRA last year, okay. but there's still stuff I need to learn, and then I have a training coming up next week for that. Right, right, okay. But it's a learning process, but as I mentioned, I learn very quickly. So, so it, it's definitely a financial function, but I would say as a general rule going forward, my recommendation would be that it's very appropriate for the person in his role to do a lot of the... Um, certain functions about it, but that the town administrator would definitely have a role also in it in terms of maybe the town administrator is working on the, on the warrant stuff because he's busy with his stuff at that time of year, but that at other times of year he can manage other aspects of it, like making sure that certain reports that are missing get uploaded and um, that, that certain processes of um, you know, for example, revised estimated revenue, he could input that, that data, press the button, print the report, and, and tell you to come sign it. So I think it's, pr it, you know... When do, so when do we start this process? We are, we are always in that process. Okay. So because we're always somewhere in the year, so we're always in a different part of the process. So right now we are finish, closing out 2021. Mm -hmm. They have most of our documents. They're waiting for revenue. Um, assessing is with the assessing section of DRA, and once it passes there, they will automatically bring it over to the municipal part of DRA. And then with that and revenue, um, I think we have everything in the portal so that the advisor will then, assuming everything's in order and that they don't throw anything back at us, which very often happens, um, then we'll get put in a queue with all the communities and we'll just wait our turn to get um, get a tax rate. But So once we get a tax rate, you kind of start all over again with now we're putting in all the information for getting a warrant in there and we're telling DRA who our auditor is going to be for 2021 and um, the tax collector's warrant and all that information gets uploaded and we're telling them what we're planning for 2022. And then we're telling them what gets revised at the deliberative session. And then we're telling them what passes the voters. And, and then we're telling them the auditor's report of, of the previous year's financials. So, so you're kind of always, just like right now, we're always somewhere in the budget cycle. We're either planning for the next one or we're observing and managing the current one. It's, it's kind of like that also. With, uh, well, I, I hope that, you know, that you know, we are in a place where we're dealing with the most immediate need and then the long-term need is satisfied. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. So, so right now it's revised estimated revenue and then the tax rate setting itself, which is really just, it'll be a conversation with Chuck or if you have somebody else here at the time, um, but Chuck with DRA around any details that need to get worked out and then here's your proposed rate, okay. and then Chuck will let you know what the proposed rate is, and then the board can call a meeting to set the rate, and then once you, um, then you'll have to sign the set rate, and, and he can upload it, but um, okay. really the critical thing is um, waiting, you know, as ridiculous as that is, you know, the critical thing is to get everything in there so you can wait. Um, and depending on what kind of, it, it's very unpredictable is, is part of the frustrating thing about it because you don't know what issues they'll find. Um, it's kind of like um, an epic reconciliation of three different bank accounts um, that I'll have to, you know, reconcile together. Okay. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> he does. All right. So, um, so, so Chuck, I also volunteered, I, and I don't know if it's possible that I... Um, um, participate in the training for that next week. Is that open session, Carolyn? I think the you have to. Michelle. This is axiomatic. Is it that, that just tells you? But I think they're just telling you kind of how the thing goes. But yeah, I think it's free. But you it have is to, free. You have to sign up because they they had one last week that was already closed because it was full. So so, so that's the there's thing. There's one every okay, I think every session. Wednesday for the last week. I think they're trying to control like the, the potential for question and answers and how that might go, but I don't I don't know. Could somebody forward me um, the
registration information for that, please? I don't. Do you, do you have? I probably don't. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right, so Comcast agreement. Um, let's see. So that still needs to be reviewed. What's the timing on that, Caroline? The Comcast Cable Franchise Agreement? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're, we're still working off the contract from 1971, so I suppose there's no critical urgency there. It's, it's more about keeping it on the board's radar because the town's invested time with, with our attorney, so an expense in um, getting to this point and having a recommendation. So um, you have, I've, I've emailed you uh -huh. that recommendation. Um, once you have a new board member, you'll have a very different board, so I would suggest that you revisit the recommendation, see how you feel about it, and either um, meet with the attorney and go over questions, or else um, have the public hearing around... Well, so I think the board it. originally, the original vote going back prior was, we were all going to have a public meeting on this. Yes, and then it didn't get arranged, and then we were having scheduling conflicts, and then other things got in the way. So yeah, it so just never just happened. Pretty much just dropped. Yes, That's but but I would encourage. Since it got dropped, I think it probably ought to stay dropped until you have another member. No, I agree. You know. It's not nothing. that's like urgent. Yeah. Okay. But we were like so close to just to finalize it. Three months ago, it could have been off our radar completely. But yes. Yeah. However, um, it's you know as, as you. It, Kim, since you weren't part of that process, something that you and the new board member might consider is whether or not you want to wire this room for mm -hmm. oh, you mentioned that closer right. for TV. And and although there's a benefit to that, there's also an administrative cost, you know, in who's going to make sure there's something streaming. Mm -hmm. Right. So so not advocating, but but just you know you, you can. <coughs> You're in a good position to ask for what you want from Comcast, but just remember that whatever you want is being paid by all the residents who pay for cable. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, I just put myself on the no parking main street because I'm on the Highway Safety Committee. So I'll just like kind of work with you on that, Chuck. If you know, depending on what happens with that. Um, oh, road service management, right? So, SRP. Um, so you prove that it's yeah. just about um, checking in. I would say like somebody ought to check in and say how's it going, mm -hmm. and did it ever get off the ground, and where are we at with it now? Okay. Maybe in a few weeks. Which one was that? I'm sorry. The this is the surface road management. surface management plan with Strap Regional Planning. Do you want to um, for now, Paul? Be mm -hmm. the, okay. Be the kind of owner for that. Until we, we'll have to we divvy up things as we bring as we bring on a new select board person. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, Phone and security. I'm kind of working with John on that already. Um, I, I mean, I have the proposal, so I don't mind continuing to kind of um, work with him on that. So um, that's good. Um, one thing I'll say about the phone system is. It, it seems to be more of a um, it seems to be more of a phone system than a security system feature. The ability to talk to people who are at the front door when the door is locked. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people ring the doorbell or knock on the door, but when you're down the hall, you don't know who they are. You don't know if you need to answer the door, or it would be very helpful if you could press a button and say, can I help you? I'm sorry, we're closed, and they have a question, and you can answer them. People are always very grateful for that. Um, I don't know what the additional cost of that is and whether or not it's worthwhile, but it's something to think about when you're getting quotes. Um, the, the phones, um, the phone system dates back to the renovation, so um, we're not able to buy new phones, and right now they're working, but um, they, they certainly don't have modern features, and, and I, I can't say I, I know what modern features are beyond be, being able to do the intercom thing with the front door, but you might explore options and see what the cost for the options is with the phones because we haven't gotten very, my understanding is we haven't gotten very far with, with the phone system idea of that. It's been more about the security. Mm -hmm. Which is, that's kind of what John impressed. The cameras, yeah. I did see them. They're, they, the resolution's not good on them. So. Well, and if I can just add that my car got hit in the parking lot and it was a hit and run just yesterday. And it's oh. only because we had a camera that happened to pick it up oh. that we were able to track the person down. So oh, good. for what it's worth, I was very grateful for that camera. Okay. 
Um, was it a hit and run when it, like someone was in the parking lot and backed into something? Somebody did a U-turn and, and like parked right next to me and thought that they could squeeze in, but um, didn't have as much room as they thought, and so they scraped me and <laughs> got out and saw that we were locked and drove away. Yeah. All right, so um, select board right on that. Harpa, select board. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm leaving these open. Um, we, I think we kind of have an idea. I'm not sure that everything needs a point of contact. It's really more right. about making right. sure that you, it's kind of a, a brain, yeah. you know, download, just so that you know some yeah. things about these things. And that's, those ones, I mean, if there's something active happening, then I would, that's why I'm doing a point of contact. But if it's not, okay. if it's not active and not immediate, then I think just leaving it as a select board. Or yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I'm making sure I check my emails daily. So if something, something comes to us, one of us, we need to take action on okay. Well, I would caution you about taking action because we know... I shouldn't like, say taking action, but you know... Like just letting up. somebody have a response and let them know that we're not going to be able to officially respond until after our next meeting but on Monday. Just, you know. just, that that does not get a note completely. So that, yeah, exactly. That's very helpful for people. Okay. Um, so the legal matter, just pending... Um, so I think there's a... Is so, a plan pending or something? That, that should get worked out in court. I would um, maybe suggest that John be the point of contact with that since he's been on those email threads. I've been forwarding to the, them to the board, so you, you certainly know who that attorney is and yeah, how to get in yeah. touch if you want to. Yeah, but, but, okay. um, and, um, John was pretty persistent about it earlier on, too. So. Okay, got it. Good. Um, is, that is that the summer's work for everyone? Um, no. No, this is um, Clement Road going to the ZBA on September 23rd. Um, what's, what's our um, involvement in that? It depends on how this, so, so the town um, is interacting with the property owner to say, you have another number of zoning violations, you need to fix them. And um, that stemmed from a number of years ago and they, went to the zoning board a number of years ago and that zoning case was recessed and never reconvened. And so the, the, the situation has gone on for decades that there's this zoning, kind of a complex compound zoning issue. So they're going to the zoning board. Um, I'm not sure whether it's going to completely fix the problem or not fix the problem. I would say Tom Clark mm -hmm. is your point of contact on this. So, but, um, but what's a select board? Like, what so, so you all have been funding an attorney okay. to advocate on behalf of the town in forcing oh, the property owner about, no. into some kind of compliance. Okay. And so, hopefully, this zoning ZBA meeting will bring it into compliance, mm -hmm. or or force him to make a decision that will, in some way, bring it into compliance. But. I would suggest somebody reach out to Tom Clark, or Tom will, I hope, update the board after that meeting to say, it I'll looks like we're still going to have to go to court, or, you know, or else the DBA case got recessed, and, and you know, he's going to come back later with more information, or somehow stay up to date. Um, Tom would be your contact. You can put me in the contact and Tom, too, because I know I'm now at the point of role we're talking about, I'm familiar with it, okay. the way we're talking about, and, um, I mean, it's been discussed several times before, but it was a while ago since. It's been, it's been ongoing, um, and it's just taken a long time because he's been trying to get all the all the land use professionals that would represent him to the ZBA have been busy and non-responsive. So it's not really his fault that it's taken forever. Um, right. But it's been ongoing. So nothing current for that. Well, wait, Tom's overseeing that. Okay. So. Um, the junkyard annual permit, the um, so they're they're done with um, the planning board. There's a final version of that plan that just came into the town office for the planning board chair to sign. Um, they have 120 days, which I believe leads to October 4th, to complete all the conditions of that plan. Um, and so Tom is going to suggest that you not approve the junkyard annual permit until those conditions of that plan are complete, which include paving the front yard and putting blueberry bushes in the little island that will be created from that paving, um, and a monitoring well, and I'm, I'm not sure what else, but those are the three. Is, where is that? This is Summersworth Road. Okay, um, I, I, I know, yeah. um, 
So, so after that, the junkyard is still required to submit an annual permit, which hasn't happened for a number of years because it's been in this ZBA and now planning board process. So now that he's finished with that, he should be able to get compliant with the 18 now, I think, conditions of that annual permit, which Tom will review with the property owner and make a recommendation to the select board. Um, but, but just to be aware and follow up with Tom, if you're not hearing about where's the annual permit. Yeah. So I'm going to jump off just for a second topic. Same top, same place, but different topic. So <clears throat> going by this place, I noticed that at one point there was something like six vehicles for sale. So I'm just asking for the zoning, if it's a junkyard, is there a limited amount of vehicles you can have for sale? Is there any vehicles you can sell? That's a really good question, and I, I hope it's something that you continue to keep an eye on because it is something we can enforce, and it's in the junkyard annual permit, and he's not allowed to have more than three for sale in that front yard area at a time. Okay. So if you're noticing more than that for more than a day or something, like maybe one's just waiting for pickup or something, but if it's a consistent ongoing issue, you can reach out to Tom okay. and say, can you go check that out and enforce Got it? it? Got it. Okay. Um, just so you guys know, I have a hard stop at 715, so I'm trying to... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to bring no, it up. No, that's okay, that's all right. I, just in case I have to leave. Yeah, yeah, let's get to what we're getting through. Okay. I'll just come back. Yep. Get back. Um, so, so I'm just looking for the things that are most immediate, because I think um, those need to be at the top of our priority list. Agreed. And things that are kind of um, more of knowledge, like knowledge transfer, um, I think, you know, once we have another select board member and a, and a town administrator, you know, can start to pick up those items again. Yep. Um, I would just want to mention the retirement audit mm -hmm. here that we thought that was done and now Chuck's getting a whole new wave of very significant work to do due by the 25th. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and he's learning of errors that happened back since 2012 that are going to need to be corrected. So, um, in the short term between that and his three upcoming trainings, um, in the short term, Chuck is very busy. Okay. So, um, what's the timing on that? Well, it's due the 25th, so it's ongoing until then. But he's doing research upstairs, digging up payroll records, going back to 2012 on employees who are not even here anymore. Okay. That's state mandated. Okay. Um, so, what is, um, is, is there some board ownership in this right now? Or the sell situation? No, check, like the retirement audit. No, there's no select board role, like whatever the outcome, if we're going to owe money or get money, Chuck will let you know, okay. but he's just got to do paperwork for now is what you need to know. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, self right. That, that. You know, that, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. That's going to drop off the radar. It has, but it's not going to go away. Don't I, cool. I didn't say it wasn't so, going to go away, but I haven't heard anything from Sol. Um, they they, they have an attorney now. Okay. I anticipate you'll hear back from them. They're probably going to say something like, what if we did it in January or February when the ground is frozen? Now, how do you feel? How do you feel? Um, Still feel the same with the roads. Well, so so you can say it again when the time comes, you know, with your new board member and get that person up to date and, and remember to go back and consult that letter that you received from the attorney about what your options are and get your new member up to up to speed. And Kim, I'll put Kim, I've been, if you're not up to date, I can bring up, not tonight, but I can bring up. But you do have that letter in your inbox somewhere from yeah. John Radigan is your attorney yeah. for that I'm, one. I'm fairly up to date, but, sure. um, you know, probably won't we'll have to. This this next one is enormous, and and there's not a, you know not enough time to say how enormous <coughs> this is. Um, we are about to get audited by the state with regard to our federal grant, which allowed us to purchase the Transfer Station Highway Department property, which is 21 acres deficient of the amount of property that we purchased, which was deeded for recreational purposes. And this is where, you know, so conflict that we have a transfer station on recreation land. So Jay Stevens, civil consultants, is trying to figure out how to figure out how to propose a scope of services to the select board to survey the transfer station highway department property to 
articulate what uses are going on where and how we might respond to this audit that's coming from the state to prove that we are still honoring this land purchase for that deeded purpose. So that's one purpose. The other thing is you have a closed landfill out there that we are required to do annual monitoring and permitting of, and we have no idea where it is. So the first thing is looking for it and finding it. Once you find it, you need a specialized engineer to install monitoring wells and start proper um, care and monitoring of the landfill. Um, and then, you know, how much of the area is really used for a transfer station so that if you want to expand the transfer station because we could do better financially if we store more goods before we ship them, that's kind of a sidebar. But the, the very, you know, the two very immediate issues are you ha you, we've got to handle, get, get a handle around the closed landfill situation and um, that audit that's coming around the, um, the park and recreation land. When is so who's going to... Sorry, is there a date for that audit? No. Um, we got a letter from the state two years ago saying we've been short-staffed, but you're way overdue for the audit, and it's coming any day now. Um, and so there is a survey that was done in, I, I, I don't remember when, 90, 96 or I don't know when, a long time ago, that shows at the time that there was already a land swap to kind of compensate for our use of the property at the time. Um, Jay Stevens has that, Tom Clark has that, Tom Clark has a copy of the letter from the state about the audit is coming, the audit is coming, so... So if we could, if we could get Tom to send that to us? And, and, and also, Ed Ed's, Walsh has... You know, so Ed's involved with it too, we've got a good understanding. He th I thought you guys walked in... We walked it and didn't find anything, there's no clear evidence of where the landfill is. The other, um, and, and Ed also went to Concord to get whatever the state had about our closed landfill in hopes that that would help us figure something out. So, so Tom has those materials, he's trying to make copies so that there are copies in two places. But the other note about a closed landfill is that if you can prove there is commercial waste in the landfill and um, there are people in town who will tell you that there are materials in there from some companies that are still active and working in Rollinsburg. So if you can go down that path, then you know the ongoing maintenance and monitoring of the landfill can be attributed back to those companies. You know, the material is five percent yours, so you're going to be five percent responsible for the monitoring costs, for example. So I don't know that you want to go down that route, but you should be aware of that option, but um, we got to locate it and find a specialized engineer. Jay Stevens will hook you up to an engineer, but he, as, as much as he's capable, he doesn't want to manage the landfill. So I made a note that um, for basically additional information from Walsh, Tom Clark and Jay Stevens are clients. Yes, and to expect a quote from Jay Stevens, which is supposed to be um, different scopes of services for different amounts of money in case you want to tackle this one part at a time because it's very complicated. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so any documentation that you might have on that account, oh. if you could send it to us, that'd be great. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Right. Um, I'm a Zoom wizard. Go on to the next thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. So, Department Heads, yet we know that um, you reviewed them. And, and I think we have, well, we need a, a new liaison for fire. Yes, but, but my point about that is to just remember that that's a void for your employees, that there was this forum for communicating with one another and for me on your behalf and getting information back and forth that's not going to happen. And so just remember that when you have a meeting and you decide whatever, and then later in the meeting you talk about something else that may or may not pertain to them. For example, meetings are now at 6 o'clock. Um, somebody's got to remember to tell people so that they know that, because department head meetings are, are one way that they get news that they wouldn't otherwise be aware of. Do we have a, um, a department head group email? No. Can we add that? Oh, you know. Well, well, it kind of, um, so, yes, um, so if, if you want that to be, um, fi so typically fire, police, um, transfer station, highway, and library are, are in that group. Okay. So um, if, if you agree that that is the department and group email, I'll create it. Um, 
Uh, well, all, all departments, I would think. Um, so if tax collector, town clerk. Um, I, I think having just one. They, they typically fall under administration, and they're busy doing like like. So the tax so the town clerk is either not here or he's actually open and can't join us. So we've tried that before. But I think just generally having that group in case there's something we want to share with all of the department heads. So, so there is a budget preparers group email address that goes to everybody who prepares. Mm -hmm. you know, so I guess I would, I would caution you around the idea of a group email address that you are down the road going to forget who's in that group. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So, so as, as long as you know who's in it and you know like that, you know, so you know what its function is. You know, I'm happy to create with whatever kind of group you want, but, um, you know, town clerk and tax collector were typically considered just part of administration and not representative department heads. But oh, we don't have administration right now, so we're not going to have administration soon, so. Well, as an interim measure, I'm just thinking. Sure, that. I mean, if you want to, I mean, I'm fine with that. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, temporarily in case we need to somehow broadcast well, something. Yeah. Um, so, um, local source water protection. Okay. Um, that, um, is that um, any immediate um, needs? That just goes back to the planning board needs a, a representative, um, and, and, and that person may or may not, but depending on who that person is, is probably not going to be a person sitting on this, but just, it's, it's so, so there's a void right now on, on that committee. Um, because not just for planning, but I've been sitting on that, so it would be helpful for a board member to sit on it, and and for that I would suggest Paul, since it's you know it, it aligns with stormwater stuff. It, it really is. Really I can do that. I can do that. You know, for I mean, for right now, and then we'll see how we go with the third board when we get third. Excuse me, third board member and. Yeah, but but there it, it would make sense if I'll it, take two. if it aligns guess, with stormwater. Storm yeah, whoever's doing stormwater. I don't mind because they're tired. Um, mm -hmm. so spreadsheet. So we manage the sewer system. Yeah, 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 but, but I'm not sure that that's really the final only recommendation from the CIP committee. So um, what, once the CIP committee is, is finished meeting, if they get finished, but they have really formally rec made the recommendation to the select board, um, the select board can rearrange funds. For example, if they were to suggest that you purchase something in 2022 and um, it's only half funded by CIP, and, and you think that's going to be a problem with the voters, you can certainly take other funds from the CIP fund and say, we're going to take it away from this other project and put it on this project. So you do not have to change the spreadsheet at all if you agree with how the CIP committee has managed it and, and moved money around. But it's just a note that you have the authority to if, if there seems to be a reason to, um, but that somebody needs to remember to put the final version, whatever that is, um, into the town report. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to just put myself um, on that for now. I'm sure Paul is happy yeah. with the spreadsheet. Well, I don't mind. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. All right. Um, House mitigation plan. Any immediate actions on that, Carolyn? Um, no, it's just a note that it's hanging out there currently with um, Homeland Security and Emergency Management. They are reviewing the, the final version that the subcommittee worked out with Stratford Regional Planning. Once Homeland Security approves it, they, they know, so, so Stratford Regional knows that I'm leaving and they will now reach out to John to say okay. Homeland Security approved it and then John will work with you to get it signed. Right. You have a draft version in your in your email um, that was sent with you when that, when that committee wrapped that up. So you can already have a sense of, typically Homeland Security does not change it significantly. So if you review that, that, that will be helpful for when the time comes and then you'll be more ready to um, know what it is and sign it. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Chuck, you said you're a Zoom king? Oh yeah. yeah. Chuck, yeah. No, you are, you are you um, okay with is handling that? Oh yeah. Uh, either permanently or temporarily? It only takes 10 seconds. Um, assessing maps. Um, so that is all. Um, who usually does that? 
We have a some lack of process around here that, that it should be addressed and, and assessing maps is one that doesn't really have an official process. It's under control for this year. Um, Avatar has all the updates they need. Um, so the MS-1 is, is, is printed and filed and everything. So at this point you're just waiting for um, Avatar to send you new maps. These are the enormous maps um, in Chuck's office. So really at this point just make sure that a new set arrives because sometimes you have to follow up and say where are they. So Chuck, Jeff. Are you, have you done this before? This is no. being new to you. So maybe you don't want to. Um, but, but it's really not any, and like he can I, know. I that, can say, Chad, we need no maps though. Okay. Yeah, and he can see maps came in the mail today, okay. or, or they don't. I mean, it's, it's not a heavy So book. just high level map management only. Um, but it is a note in the bigger picture for me, you know, yeah. how do we make sure that as the planning board approves a subdivision, that Avatar knows for the purposes of updating the maps as well as for the purposes of updating the assessing. Um, that that is, um, you know, it happens, but it's not consistent and smooth. Um, okay. So that might, be, you know, that's just a point of discussion for the next um, TA, really. Okay. Just Tom Clark, um, Parker, he's good. Um, welfare, Chuck. Um, so you're doing welfare now? Uh -huh. Okay. How you doing? How's that? You okay with that? That's good. You know, just while we're on welfare, there's a hierarchy of. Sure. Emergencies that come along. So if I'm do, if I'm doing DRA mm -hmm. and welfare mm -hmm. person comes in, I have to go to welfare because that's the law. <coughs> right. So you know, there's there are all these time sensitive right. things, okay. and so inevitably something <coughs> will if will drop if, yeah. if welfare comes in. Okay. Like today, I was in the middle of doing the audit stuff, welfare case. So. <coughs> well, if you need help with that, I could help. I was going to say the same thing. Because um, I, one was here, so well, I, I managed the welfare department for five okay. years, well, so I do okay. have some knowledge of the, the laws, et cetera. Good. Um, but hopefully it won't come to that. I'll just say because that's my worst nightmare. Best <laughs> <laughs> <That's> five years <laughs> of your life. <laughs> oh, worst job I ever had. <laughs> okay. um, so, but if you need something, tell me. Mm -hmm. And I'm in touch with all the other welfare folks. It's just when that person comes in. It's it's a time management problem. Right? Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, okay, follow the letter, we're aware, and so Sal may handle that. Well, she does, but, but don't, don't gloss over the fact that she needs content. And so typically I write content around what's going on with the town mm -hmm. that the residents might care about, what's new. Okay. So um, she gets tidbits of content from other entities in town, which is valuable, but that tends to be smaller than whatever is written on behalf of the town. So um, somebody, ought, and, and whatever that is, should be, you know, a conversation probably at the board level around, mm -hmm. you know, what's been going, you know, so, so it comes out in late November or December, but it's kind of the thing that gets put on the fridge for some people for yep. the next six months until the next one comes out. Yep. We, so what, what do you want people to know? We should probably put that as like where it comes up before Salome has to do it, as put it as an action item for the select board to make sure we okay. communicate and whatever information mm -hmm. we can get from whether it's rec, okay, highway, whatever you need. Yeah, and 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 so oh, like wait, and, and what your what's going on with the town? Yeah, what what do you care most that the town? What what would the town people care most? You know, if if somebody hasn't been to a meeting in six months or won't be for six more months, what yeah. would you really want them to know is coming up or something? Okay. Um, agenda creation, that was on my list too. So currently that's you, um, but I four it, editors. So, so I, I take the old, and I did that today, and I let you know so that you wouldn't also do it, but going forward, somebody ought to be in charge of, and I would suggest that it's the town administrator. You can work that out when the time comes, but in the interim, it might be you, Kim, since sure. you're very Google savvy, but um, somebody should take the last one and make a copy and rename it to be the new one and delete whatever got decided and all those things. Okay. okay. I would just caution you when you're doing that to um, make sure that you're not removing something from the agenda that um, hasn't really been finalized yet, but make sure that the board is making the decisions around, like, like you did last night about, I would propose that we move all the policy stuff off of here for now, and the board agreed to that, rather than just 
you know, trying to make an efficient meeting and sure. picking the five priorities. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. And then transition meeting. Um, we'll circle back and see if we want to schedule another meeting, I think. Um, so, um, so we have our first, oh, select board budget workshop. <coughs> um, so we have our first one, and that is next no, not next week. Yeah, I gotta get all those dates. It's the twentieth. We have we set like four dates in. I know. I hope um, you got them all. Make sure. It, well, it should be in the minutes. Um, so we should have that for you. So soon. Monday at six is a regular select. Oh, yeah. And then Tuesday. And then Tuesday at five thirty is interviews. board interviews. Yep. And then the following, um, and the so the thirteenth is going to be your new every other regular meeting week. You said, yep. um, but you are meeting on the twentieth, also at six, six yep. going forward, and that's going to be a budget workshop. Yep. So, is there anything you want to add to that right now? Um, I can sure. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, we went to October. I thought in October. Um, oh, only the for program. the parking oh, public yeah, hearing okay. um, is in early October. Was there something else? Um, well, we talked about CIP and stormwater and highway, but we didn't have to. We don't have to go into that. So, Chuck, you are currently doing the paid time on tracking? Well, I typically do that, but I'm oh, suggesting okay. that we give that to Chuck since he sees all the timesheets. Are you okay with that? Mm hmm. Okay. Is yeah. that much of an effort for you? Uh, it will, you know, well, it's in Excel, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So that makes it fun. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> The more things we add on, you know, okay. then because of the, you know, the time sensitive nature of some things, some mm -hmm. things may not get done okay. on time. Um, okay. Uh, well, if you need help, um, let me know. Mm -hmm. okay. um, do you want me to put myself um, as well as you on that? Just in case, or, or? No, I can do it. Okay. It's just, you know. Good. Thank you. I have. Not a whole lot of extra time to add to the right. Okay. So. Um, so a couple more things I had on mine. Um, the 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 the, month, the Monday um, bill and check preparation um, is that typically all done by you, Chuck, okay. and you just bring in the folders. So we should just plan to um, go in and get them from Chuck's desk. I'll, I'll just leave the folders on the table. Okay, great. Um, but what I do anyway. you might go back up to the top. Um, on that first agenda item and, and make that a to-do when you have a new board member. Oh, okay. Like settle down, like who's going to always sign the checks and who's going to always approve the bills. And not that you can't shake it up and, and certainly everybody can look at the bills, but it's, it's helpful if one person always approves them. Okay. Um, so let me ask you, so I, I really have to leave and like, um, do we want to schedule another discussion, transition discussion? Maybe you want to do a quick 30 minutes. Um, yeah. Um, maybe we can make that as part of our next regular meeting. Probably. On well, you're Monday. not here on the 20th. Um, no, you're not here on the I, 13th. I'm, I'm done a week from Friday, so in the 13th, Monday, I can't make. So okay. we've got a meeting every other night next week, and I can certainly come in early, or I can come early in the morning, or, you know, stay later, however you want to do it. But I think the only other things um, that I had questions about was, so meeting notices um, and updates, um, you know, who um, could As long that? as Chuck, I think, as long as Chuck knows what's the meeting and when, and whether or not it has a Zoom link to it, you can tell him, please create a meeting at that date and time and he'll take care of it. Okay. Are you okay with that, Chuck? Yep. Because I go with the Zoom thing anyway. Okay. Just like working. So, Chuck, okay. And then, uh, contact info. Um, I think probably you have a number of contacts that we you should share with us, like Tia's um, phone and email, um, Salme, obviously, um, contact information. Um, I'm trying to think of how easily, like, how to do that. Um, and I, I, I see what you're saying, I just don't know. Um, I don't know if I can just share a contact list. Um, so let's do this because I really, I, nope, I really let's do a sound it. Something and we'll do um, it. So next week, um, maybe just another quick. I can export. Yep, I, I see that you can export contacts. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll look into how to export contacts. Let's make it Tuesday. All right. Um, well, Tuesday is. Oh, the interview. Yeah. It is five so Let's do it that day. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. We'll but, just piggyback on that. Yeah, well, we're going to have either stormwater or CIP right after that. So, so I can push that to 630, whatever it is, but you don't, you know. Um, that's fine. I mean, I don't know about you, Paul. I'm if fine. I had to, I could probably be here by 5. I'm going exactly. to way. I mean, usually I'm usually home by 4.30, quarter of 5. So. Um, so you have stormwater that same day? Well, yes, but I'm thinking about switching stormwater and CIP because CIP can't meet on Thursday. So I'm thinking about putting CIP on, on Tuesday and moving stormwater to Thursday, but I haven't talked to those groups about their availability for that. Okay. But that? otherwise, CIP is, is not really finished. Just so you know, so you know. Okay. So why don't we start at five on? Five o'clock on the fourteenth. On the fourteenth, which is Tuesday. I'm just okay. making sure that's the right date. Okay. Then we'll do the half hour, and then we'll get interviews, and then from there we'll figure out if I want storm water or if you haven't got any. Okay, yeah. that's good. Good. All right. Very good. Thank but you. I just uh, need to adjourn. Table. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's okay. You got quite a bit accomplished. Yep. Um, and we may have more questions after this meeting as well. Okay. So you had a lot of writing today, didn't you? Thank you, John. Yeah. All right. That was still almost late. I'm sure I'll probably have a couple of questions to write on Tuesday. Exactly. Um, yeah, whatever you're doing, bring some so that you know what your questions are. That's right. That's helpful. Thank you, Caroline.